Thank you for joining me for the Vampire Talk Show. I'm your host, Valaine. Val to my friends. My roommate discovered my coffin under the concrete floor of the basement in her new house and woke me up from a hundred year nap. Now I'm reconnecting with old friends, making new ones, and of course, making a podcast. Tonight's show is foretold to be a doozy, but first, I want to talk about something I did last weekend that was utterly fascinating. For the most part, Allie and I have opposite schedules. She's a day-walking goth, and I am a nighttime floozy, but she likes a good late night, and she introduced me to my new favorite nighttime activity outside of draining a muscle-bound chad before a promenade in one of the many circles of hell. My new favorite obsession, indoor mini golf of the black light variety. I was familiar with golf, though I never got to play since it's a daytime sport. Not that I wanted to. It always sounded so boring. I agree with Mark Twain that golf is a good walk spoiled, but indoor mini golf is a whole other ball game. Everything about my experience was assaulting due to my enhanced senses. The music was loud, the colors were bright under the black lights, and the smell of hot dogs and stale beer smacked me on the nose relentlessly. However, I had the time of my life. If you had told me a decade ago that I would find such joy in knocking a tiny ball in a hole while listening to Leonard Skinner and seemingly inside of a dorm room black light poster, I would have said, moi? How positively gauche. But I suppose I'm loosening up in my old age. One of the obstacles no one seemed to be able to beat was an elephant whose trunk swung back and forth in front of the hole. It's rigged, I heard the youths cry out. And then I took aim. Luckily for me, I have heightened senses and was able to calculate the exact time and amount of pressure I would need to exert. I lined up my shot and swung. I made it past the elephant trunk but missed the hole by a mile. The youths snickered at me, and I heard one of them comment on my outfit, saying I looked like I was in a bachelorette party group with the feather boa and sequin dress I was wearing. Anyway, I will be frequenting the indoor mini golf again soon, and I hear they're also adding go-karts. To be continued. Tonight's guest is known as the Harbinger. I'm talking about Jebediah Cornelius Matthias III. Welcome, darling, to the program. It is so good to see you. Well, howdy, Val. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. <laughs> yes, uh, we became friends through a, a mutual. Um, I believe it was uh, one of those teenager killers one of those ones that wield some sort of machete or big ass knife or something like that um oh, you're, you're you're talking about jacob he's he's a good boy with a good head on his shoulders oh yes jacob jacob the teenager killer um yes have you uh have you had the pleasure of doing indoor mini golf jebediah well i can't say that i have although i have seen a uh, a quarterback beaten to death with a mini golf club uh, in my time before. But no, I've never had the pleasure of actually participating in the sport. Uh, very busy. You know, work comes first. Speaking of work, what is it that you actually do? Well, you, you know, I, I do take a, a great bit of pride in what I do. So now to understand what it is I do, you must first understand that the greatest gift you can give to the dark and old ones is, you know, a willing sacrifice of your soul and spirit to feed their insatiable hunger. And, and as such, like if these teenagers are going up into the, the dark forgotten dark forest or, you know, into the uh, the old quarry, uh, and they just, you know, I, I like to call it unalived, but, you know, whatever terminology is hit nowadays. <laughs> but, you know, w when they meet their inevitable end, if they had no idea it was coming, then that wouldn't be much of a sacrifice, now would it? Now, 
what I do is I make it undeniable what is going to befall these youngsters if they don't turn the back and uh, forsake their ways and, you know, live a, a good and wholesome life. But, you know, they're just too too damn horny and they just gotta go up and they, they don't care what I got to say so in the eyes of the great dark old ones that's as good as much as just you know accepting your fight and yes so you 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 very much um the middleman between a sacrificer and sacrificee then yes I, I mean that's that's one way to look at it. I like to I think of more of myself as a salesman now you know if you're going to forsake a logic and all rational thought because you know you got a uh, an ounce of the marijuanas and reefers <laughs> in your backpack and you got a, a pretty little lady that you're looking to fix yourself up with well <laughs> you're just not going to pay attention to what's right in front of you and you know that's what i sell i sell the dream that naivety so that you know they can enjoy a little bit of time before ultimately they join the eternal darkness that will be the never-ending void of hunger so what's your turnover rate i mean do any of them actually heed your advice and turn tail and run well you know every once in a while you will find that youngster who's uh, pure of heart and you know they can you know sometimes get out of a deal but i i myself consider myself a closer so uh, uh we have a very good turnover awake and uh the the unfathomable darkness and madness that lies just beyond the periphery uh that they have given me glowing reviews and you can actually check that on my my linkedin <laughs> on your linkedin oh yes well um what a plug um so <laughs> now this is nothing but a network if i'm right am i right <laughs> so are you freelance or are you hitched to one wagon Oh, oh well, you know, being part of the harbinger, I mean, it, it requires a lot of dedication and, and, and frankly, just blind obedience outside of any rational thought. So I, I'm kind of, I'm a very much a loyalist, a company man, if you could say. You know, keep that train on rolling. That's what my grand great crappy always said. Uh, you know, darkness rests his soul. So is this a a family uh, tradition then? Do you come from a long line of harbingers? Oh, yes. Ever since my great, great, great grandpappy, uh, third gold marshal, uh, uh, he, uh, he stumbled upon a uh, a tome actually bound in what we now know to be human flesh that was uh, uh, removed forcefully from a living subject uh, and crafted into a tome uh, to really en encompass the great and awful deeds done by the old ones. Uh, and, and once he found that, and he found his way into the glory of the endless void, uh, you know, it, our, our bell had been rung. And, you know, ever since then, the good old uh, Matthias line has been dedicated to uh, exonerating the great old ones until their return, where they will inevitably devour everything that lives. Oh, yes. Um, an end of days sort of prophecy. Um, care to divulge when that might be? <laughs> I'm not one to spoil surprise. <laughs> and uh, I also signed an NDA, so um, oh, that would course. be... Uh, yeah. like company man, as I said. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, between uh, groups of teenagers that come into your, your domain, um, in between your, your harbinging, um, what do you do with your time? Well, I am rather passionate about model trains. <laughs> I mean, I just love, you know, as someone who is very deeply uh, committed to d the ultimate an annihilation of everything that ever was, um, every once in a while it's not to actually, like, build something. Uh, so, you know, I got into my basement in, uh, in the shed, you know, you know, when I can make room when the bodies aren't, you know, at capacity. Uh, I do like to craft little model trains, and uh, I, we got a whole community, you know. I actually got a TikTok that, uh, from one of my trains. You, you can follow it. It, it. It's at the end of days railways. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you can follow, like and subscribe, like and subscribe. You know, your support helps me continue to uh, do what I do. Um, you know, not only spreading the end of days, but also bringing you uh, as a as a mini train enthusiast. 
Oh my goodness. End of days railways. I I absolutely love it. Do you wear a little cap on top of your head there? <laughs> like a, um, a conductor's cap when you are engaging in your hobby? You know what? I uh, I never thought of that. It's uh I don't like to show my face on account of my uh uh how you say um receded, receding hairline and um general uh, uh leprosy like complexion uh so usually it's just my hands but you, you can know you can tell they're my hands because there's no fingernails yes um the boils are particularly um disconcerting i will say I like um, to name and them. actually here i'll hand you a roll of paper towels for you there you go um so, oh, <laughs> that one bopped. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You. There you go. Yes, <laughs> just, uh, just take the whole roll. You're good. Oh, um, oh. <laughs> control yourself now, young lady. I know how you like human fluids. I stick to blood, darling. Pus is beyond, beyond the pale. Uh, there's a little blood in there, but yeah, okay, yeah. I get. I understand. I'm good, thank you. I had a large lunch. <laughs> um. So, uh, are you in one location, or do you travel for your work? Oh no, no. There's a there's a world tour every once in a while. You know, uh, we 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 typically remain in kind of like the uh, we like to start at the northeast, especially around the winter time. There, the Q1 in January, between January and March, and you know, the beginning of not the fiscal year, but you know, the annual one uh, when we're you know do, putting our portfolios together and really you know trying to maximize the the amount of dark and return to our efforts. Um, but as we do that. Um, you know, we like to start in the northwest where it is darkest and coldest. Mm -hmm. um, as it starts to warm up and you get more of that, the uh, the crop starts coming in, that's when we like to move over to that Midwest. Oh, um, yes. And from there, you, uh, just in fall, especially when you get that wonderful scenery up on the west coast, we'll get into the Colorado mountains. And, you know, that's when the teens get the horniest because, mm -hmm, you know, yes. all of them layers. But anywho, uh, so... That is uh usually that that's the United States. You know, I got some uh the 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 Easter market when they have more of like the, the spooky boogly boogly ghosts, but uh mm -hmm. you know, they have you know, they're they're a wonderful people. So, you know. May I ask, um, do you have a favorite entity that you work for that, you know, kills off these sacrifices? Like I know you you spoke of the Midwest and I know for a fact the children of the corn up there. Um, lovely uh, group we, of children. We call them champions. Oh, champions. Oh, yes. Oh, fantastic. Yes. Uh, do you have a favorite group or, or entity that um, you harbinge for? Well, <laughs> I'm, uh, I might be a little biased in this because my great grand um, she was actually a lunch lady that would uh, uh, serve the children children. <laughs> so big fan <laughs> but she's my great grandmammy so uh you know um like i said i'm a little i'm biased you know oh uh, i'm partial uh, to to cannibalism myself so no no yeah. harm no foul <laughs> yeah they used to call me uh bias matthias you know that's what they used to call me do you have other biases mr matthias uh well i you know what uh, i hate to admit it but i am partial to pumpkin spice Really? I just, I uh, when them leaves start falling with the bodies, I mean, I just can't help myself for some cinnamon and nutmeg. It just drives me wild, and I know it's not good for me. I gotta watch my cholesterol. My sugar is just crazy, but um, <laughs> you know. I do love pumpkin spice myself. Um, anytime uh, Allie has a pumpkin spice latte, I just have to have a little bit of her blood because. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but uh, vampires can taste the last thing that a human has eaten. So I know what human food tastes like, and I know what pumpkin spice tastes like because I drink their blood. So um, I do also enjoy a pumpkin spice latte, um, although it is very uncool to admit that, which I think is weird. It's like, why, why is it uncool to have a preference for something, a flavor? I don't get it. You know what, Val? You know what's uncool? What's uncool are people who try to pressure you and not liking what you like. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. This is your truth. This is your truth. Uh, you should just enjoy, and everyone else around you, you know, they just need to accept it. And, and like, you know what? Let's talk about that Taylor Swift girl. Oh, are we going to get into it? <laughs> 
let's go ahead. Let's 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 talk about Taylor Swift because um, everyone else right. seems to be. <laughs> so look, I have a lot of experience seeing a young one who can command legions to follow them blindly, and that young girl, she has a great potential for harboring in a whole new generation to accept the Dark Lord. I, 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 I mean, if we can just, like, with the right marketing, and, and, you know, she just won another Grammy. So, you know, she is all the rage. And, you know, it, it, the fact, too, that, you know, she's outraging all these Christians, I mean, what's not to love? I mean, you know, th this is Tay Tay's world, and we're all just living in it. That is until the the dark ones come back and devour us all. Yes, but, you know, absolutely. Until uh, until then, like I knew she was trouble when she walked in. <laughs> That's my favorite. Oh, that was that was just low hanging fruit. I think <laughs> that was that was my nickname in college. But okay. <laughs> oh. Yes, um, I, I, I think Taylor Swift would make an excellent um, uh, elder god, you know. Um, well, just the read line. the internet. I mean, she is dialed in. You should see some of these articles. Like, there's no way she's not bringing about the end of days. I mean. <laughs> it certainly seems like it. It certainly does. Um, yes, uh, speaking of... Uh, you know, uh, Christians and everything. And, uh, you know, when it comes to like uh, crosses and everything, um, it, it's not my favorite. And it's interesting because they seem to be very keen on throwing crosses in your face these days. It wasn't really, it wasn't really around when uh, I was last awake in the twenties, the nineteen twenties. Um, but the crosses seem to be everywhere these days they're on american flags they're on clothing they're on jewelry and um it it is uh, quite disturbing for me because it's basically having poison all around me at any moment which you know is terrible <laughs> well as much as i can uh, appreciate the exoneration of a mutilated human corpse and the thralls of torture strung up on two intersection pieces of wood held in place only by three lead spikes. The fact that they're sowing so much division and hatred and and mistrust amongst their fellow human race, I, 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 honestly, it feels a little bit like cultural appropriation. I mean, the dark old ones, they have been sowing the seeds of madness in memoriam and to have like these new found old in my opinion it's like the silicon valley city slickers who think they can just come in and change how things used to be it is quite frankly offensive you know my culture is not a costume and i would ask that these religious zealots you know if they're gonna commit their lives to sowing mistrust and hatred and spreading all sorts of awful things, then they need to set aside what they think they know and come on to the real team. I mean, we're uh, we're we're a tier baby. We're going all the way, you know, you know, just like Tay Tay's boyfriend. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yes, I I, I think uh, yeah, Christianity is the youngest religion, really, and uh, it's um... and youngsters they just they never want to listen. <laughs> they just got to find out for themselves. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. All right, so Val. I just have to know. I mean, your skincare routine. I mean, that is a flawless Thank you. smile you got going there. Yes. You know, the fact that I only have about two or three teeth, like I can really appreciate how well you've taken care of those pearly little whites, especially the, 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 the sharp ones, which uh, I yes. really care. Like, uh, <laughs> but that's, that's, I apologize. Uh, oh anywho. no, yes. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so what, what is your, your, your routine, um, if I might ask? Well, um, drinking blood helps, I will say. Um, keeps me young, keeps me youthful. If I don't drink any blood, then I start getting wrinkly and liver spotty and uh, sometimes even skeletal. Um, but uh, yes, uh, drinking uh, blood and the life force from other people um, keeps me young and beautiful forever. That's why I always look... 24 um so uh yes um unfortunately there's not really much in the way of tips because 
that's pretty much it. I'm sorry, my friend, if you were looking for a solution to your own um, issues with your skin. <laughs> I'm trying to be delicate as possible here, darling. Um, but um, Allie is uh, very into skincare and she is very into the Korean skincare products. Does so she have anything for her skin that is no longer on the living? Um, I think you would need to employ a tanner <laughs> in that sense. Um, oh, I've I've got a tanner. Don't worry. Okay. And a Chad and a <laughs> and a brass and. <laughs> oh yes, I'm sure you have one of each of every name that has ever been. <laughs> like I said, I'm a bit of a collector. Actually, are you are you immortal or are you mortal? Oh, oh no, no. Uh, uh, we are quite mortal. I mean, we are just here to serve our purpose before we inevitably end our days into a pitch black void of nothingness. But uh, mm. until then, we have ourselves a hoot root nanny, and um, you know, we, you got to teach the young ones. I mean, yes. Um, so do you all get together occasionally, all the harbingers, and and uh, uh, swap tips and tricks and whatnot? Uh, yeah, mostly at the GOP primaries, uh, but... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's when you get people really dedicated to the cause. Um... I know being a harbinger is sometimes a lonely sort of job, so I'm, I'm so glad that you get to see other harbingers. Um, at least. Oh, uh, you, you misheard, because uh, we actually have quite the, uh, uh, the fan base for what we do. Oh, do you? Uh... Oh, there's a whole community of young ladies who are just really into uh, harbinger, the harbinger lifestyle. Oh, are there? <laughs> <laughs> we call them a uh, harbinger harlots. Uh, uh, they're very big fans into the harbinger lifestyle and uh, everything that it it, it entails. Uh, but yeah, some some ladies they're just uh, they get wild about us. So we have conventions and they come around and you know there's some cosplay and wow. <laughs> everyone comes is like their favorite. Like I saw like two or three Jacobs uh, that were at the last one and you know it's like. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a fan myself, but I, I thought it was him. Like, he was crazy. But he was actually up on the upper deck signing autographs. Um, oh, yeah. So. He's a little bit too popular. Um, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And I know Freddie and Jason, they always talk shit about him because they're from the old guard, and they don't mm -hmm. like these newcomers up and coming. But, you know, I'm telling you, Jacob, he's the next Tay-Tay, at least in what we do. Uh, yes, in in your world, J uh, Jacob is the Tay Tay of uh, the Taylor Hawk. Swift for yes, <laughs> yes. I I think I think uh, the people that listen to this know what Tay Tay is. Who Tay Tay is, I should say. Anyway, well, I I have learned so much about harbinging and um, the elder gods and the end of days, and I am my head is swimming. Um, however, well, you're welcome. <laughs> thanks. Um, we are going to now get into some paranormal gossip. A woman in Pennsylvania recently complained about a local Sasquatch skulking around her yard. She said that her garden had been maniacally trampled by the big-footed beast, saying it feels intentional. She feels targeted. When reached for comment, the Sasquatch in question confessed that indeed their intent was to kill the plants in her garden. The reason? Invasive plant species that are harmful to the environment were plentiful in her garden. When asked the follow-up question of, isn't there a better way to handle that, perhaps a conversation, the Sasquatch shrugged and said, have you ever talked to a human? They don't listen. They just run and scream. And that does it for paranormal gossip. Um, that's all for the show tonight. Thank you again to uh, Mr. Matthias III, um, the Harbinger. Um, and uh, yes, thank you so much for all of the information that you have bestowed. And I hope that you do come back. 
Oh, yes, Val, I had a great time, and you have just been uh, the loveliest of hosts. And for uh, any of you... Uh, uh, in, in, individuals interested in the end of days and the the coming darkness, or just interested in uh, a hobby train enthusiasts, uh, again follow me on TikTok and uh, uh, all the social medias, and uh, I'll hopefully uh, see you all uh, on the other side. Oh, thank you, thank you. Well, that's all for tonight, kitties. Remember, embrace the dark, the strange, and unusual. It just may embrace you back. Please consider becoming a Patreon member of the show. You can be a Baby Bat Sticker Club member where you get stickers every month, or you can be a Tarot Speakeasy member where you can get a tarot reading and tarot card sent to you every month. Please subscribe on patreon.com slash the vampire talk show. This has been an Opus Knox Media production. To find out more, go to opusnoxmedia.com.